Dear students, I welcome you to this lecture. Today, we are going to discuss one of the learning theories that is known as insightful learning theory. This theory belongs to the school of psychology known as Gestalt psychology. The theory of learning by insight has been established by the Gestalt psychologists who vehemently rejected the mechanistic perspective of the stimulus response models. The German psychologists Kohler, Kofka and Werdimer well aware about the principles of Gestalt severely criticized analytical approach of behaviorists on learning and educated insight theory of learning based on cognitive principles. Dissatisfied with the behaviorist approach of learning, the cognitivists tried to see learning as a more deliberate and conscious effort of the individual rather than a mere product of habit formation or a machine-like stimulus response connection. They uphold that the learner does not merely respond to a stimulus, but definitely process that he receives or perceives. Thus, learning becomes a purposive, explorative and creative activity instead of trial and error. Insight theory is a theory regarding perception. Gestalt psychologists consider learning as the development of insight, which is primarily connected with the nature of the perception. Perception is a process by which an organism interprets and organizes sensation to produce a meaningful experience of the world and typically involves further processing of sensory input. Insight learning does not involve gradual shaping or trial and error. Instead, internal organizational processes occur to cause new behavior while learning. The learner always perceives the situation as a whole and after seeing and evaluating the different relationships, takes the proper decisions intelligently. Gestalt psychology focusing on organized wholes used the term insight to describe the perception of the whole situation by the learner and his intelligence in responding to the proper relationships. Insight refers to the sudden flash in the mind about the solution of the problem. This insight learning is a type of learning or problem solving that happens all of a sudden through understanding the relationships of various parts of a problem rather than through trial and error. Insight learning involves the I have found it feeling or eureka or aha moment. This learning approach emphatically views learning as a reorganizing of a whole situation in contrast to the behavioral psychology notion that learning consists of association between stimulus and response. Gestalt psychologists argue that the phenomenon such as learning must be treated as a whole. In learning, whole is more than the sum of its parts. Learning comes in sudden flashes or insight. Only when the learner puts the parts together in such a way that the complete whole becomes an organized pattern and that exceeds the mere sum or total of those parts. Max Verdimer wrote, The experiments done by the Gestalt psychologists obviously show how insight or perception of relationships known as cognitive awareness or map between the different elements of a situation and goal get organized together forming a pattern that enables the organism to achieve the goal that is solving the problem. Kohler's experiment showed 
that animals like humans were able to solve problems by perceiving new objects in new forms and relationships as a mental process rather than a behavioral one such as classical or operant conditioning. It was in 1920s that the German psychologist Wolfgang Kohler designed some simple experiments to study the behavior of chimps and this led to the development of the first cognitive theory of learning called as insight learning. In his experiment, Kohler hung a piece of fruit just out of reach of chimps. He then provided the chimps with either two sticks or three boxes, then waited and watched. Kohler noticed that after the chimps realized that they could not simply reach or jump up to retrieve the fruit, they stopped, had a seat and thought about how they might solve the problem. Then after a few moments, the chimps stood up and proceeded to solve the problem. In the first scenario, what happens? The problem was solved by placing the smaller stick into the longer stick to create one very long stick that could be used to knock down the hanging fruit. In the second scenario, the chimps would solve the problem by stocking the boxes on top of each other, which allowed them to climb up to the top of the stock of boxes and reach the fruit. The experiments demonstrated the role of intelligence and perception in learning. Cognitive abilities help the organism to survey the situation, establish relationships between its different parts. The learner views the situation as a whole, develops the relationship between the different segments of a problematic situation, and organizes his experiences in the form of a meaningful whole. In place of purely mechanical or instrumental approach, insight learning theory does emphasize the role of purpose, understanding, reasoning, etc. in the process of learning. Learning is interpreted as a purposive, exploratory and creative enterprise, not a mechanical one. Now, dear students, let us see what happens during the process of insightful learning. Let us go through the stages that constitute it. First, it is need. Nobody can deny the fact that need to learn becomes a necessary ingredient for any type of learning. And insight learning is no exception. This need may be either biological, like hunger, thirst, or it may be social, like gregariousness, or even personal, like the desire for power, prestige and recognition. Now there is a stage of preparation. At this very stage, the learner recognizes the presence of an intervening obstacle on his way to the goal. The learner observes the problematic situation, analyzes it and perceives the relationship between the goal and the obstacle. The Learner makes various surveys, inspections, and minute examination of the problem and its fate. Then comes the stage of incubation. It refers to the stage of clearance or dormant period when all overt activities are suspended. It is a period of no progress when the organism silently thinks over the problem. After analyzing the total situation, the learner reaches in conclusion by means of hesitation, pause, concentrated attention, etc. Now comes the stage of inspiration. In this very stage, the idea of the problem comes suddenly. In a certain moment, there is a sudden 
perception of the relationship in the total situation and the organism directly performs the required act. This sudden idea or perception flashes in the mind at once. It is the bright idea or we may call it the brain wave. This comes to the mind during this stage. This stage is sometimes characterized by shouting, jumping in joy as the organism is enlightened by the bright idea which came in a flash. Now, verification, that is the last stage of insightful learning. It is this stage of insightful learning in which the organism makes practical application of his bright new idea. The learner directly prepares the required act. It is the stage where the learner reaches the ability to understand the relevant parts of the situation and overlooking the irrelevant ones. In case of Sultan, the chimpanzee, it joined both the sticks, placed the boxes one after the other and got upon the third box and brought the bunch of banana hanging on the roof. Dear students, now let us go through the laws of insightful learning that govern it. First, it is the law of proximity. The law of proximity states that objects which are close together are likely to be seen as a group. Terming it differently, this law states that stimulus elements that are close together tend to be perceived as belonging together. Now there is law of similarity. The principle of nearness does not hold for all stimulus constellations. In some situations other factors operate to override the influence. The law of similarity states that when there are different sets of objects on view, then they are perceived as groups rather than individual objects. This law leads us to link together parts of the visual field that are similar in color, brightness, texture, shape or any other quality. In the figure, you just see each black square is closer to a circle than it is to another black square. Yet the black squares are perceived as being grouped with other black squares instead of the circles which are closer to them. This perceptual phenomenon illustrates the principle of similarity. The greater the similarity among stimuli, the more likely it is that they will be perceived as part of a common group. Now there comes the law of closure. According to the law of closure, things are grouped together if they seem to complete some entity. Our brains often ignore contradictory information and fill in gaps in information. According to this law, we prefer complete forms to incomplete forms. Thus, perception of objects is more complete than the sensory stimulation we receive from them. Perceptual processes tend to organize the world by filling in gaps so that we perceive a whole subject, not disjointed parts. This filling in is called as closure or tendency to complete in perception. What is physically an incomplete pattern or object? This principle has been referred to as the pregnancy theory in perception, indicating fullness, wholeness and completeness. Look at the figure. The figure shows that viewers tend to supply missing elements to close or complete a familiar figure, even though the figure is actually not there in its totality. 
when the outline of an object is left unfinished, as long as the gap is less than half the total circumference, then the object is identified and perceived as whole rather than a different shape. Thus, in the drawing above, we mentally close the gaps and perceive it as IBM. This tendency allows us to perceive the whole objects from incomplete and imperfect forms. Law of Continuity This is also known as common direction or common fate. The elements of a stimulus having common direction are grouped together and perceived as a separate object from those that have a different direction. This refers to a tendency in which the objects that appear to form a continuous pattern are perceived as belonging together. For example, in the figure that you are seeing, lines AB and CD are perceived crossing each other rather than identified as four lines A, B, C and D meeting at point P. This is because of the continuity factor. Now, law of pregnancy. The law of pregnancy is sometimes referred to as the law of good figure or the law of simplicity or symmetry. This law holds that objects in the environment are seen in a way that makes them appear as simple as possible. This principle suggests that symmetrical areas tend to be seen as figures against asymmetrical backgrounds. For example, in the figure that you are seeing, there are two arrow-headed lines A and B. Figure A is symmetrical and as such perceived as good figure. It gives an experience of completeness. Figure B is not symmetrical and therefore not experienced as good figure. It gives an experience of incompleteness. The symmetrical figures maintain the balance of set and as such tend to be perceived as good figures as well as organized better than those which are not symmetrical. Dear students, our discussion will be incomplete if we do not go through some of the educational implications that insightful learning gives. Insightful learning puts emphasis on making learning tasks purposeful and goal oriented. Owing to this approach, learning does not involve simple reflexive or automatic machine-like responses, contiguity of mental elements in time and space does not in itself guarantee their association. A sort of mental energy is required to produce association and recall. Gestalt psychologists do call it a need or an interest. This idea has focused on the importance of motivation in learning. The learner needs to be motivated by arousing his interest and curiosity for the learning process and again needs to be well acquainted with the objectives of the learning. Purpose or goals of learning should be made clear to students. The teacher's most important responsibility is to help the learner to find worthwhile goals which may be clear and realistic. In the organization of the syllabus and planning of the curriculum, the Gestalt principles should be given due consideration. A particular subject needs to be presented in an integrated whole, not as a mere collection of isolated facts or topics. In the same way, the whole curriculum comprising of different subjects and activities should reflect unity and cohesiveness. Terming it differently, 
the learning material should be presented in the form of a gestalt that is a whole. According to this theory, whole is not summation of parts. The teacher should present the picture of whole subject matter in the class first and then he should come to its parts. This highlights the important maxim from the whole to the parts in the field of learning. If a teacher wishes his students to learn or memorize a poem, it should be presented to him as a whole. And after being read and understood as a whole, it may be broken into parts or stanzas for being effectively memorized. Similarly, a problem requiring solution should be considered as a whole and after being assessed as a whole may be tackled for solution on a piecemeal basis. According to Brunner, the teacher should study the learner's reactions in order to determine the methods, order of presentation that will prove most helpful. Spoon feeding and cramming should be discouraged. The teacher should encourage the students to reach the material to develop insight. The greater contribution of the insight theory of learning is that it has made learning an intelligent task requiring mental abilities instead of blind fumbling and automatic responses to specific stimuli. It has criticized strongly the mechanical memorization, drill and practice work which lack in basic understanding and use of thinking, reasoning and creative mental powers. This theory helps the learner to develop reasoning, thinking and imagination powers and thus their creative potentials are encouraged. This theory has proved helpful in adapting problem solving approach in the class. As mentioned earlier, the structure and systematic organization of subject matter plays an important role in learning. The teacher should study the learner's reaction every time in order to see whether the material is organized systematically or not. Small children are better able to perceive essential relations when they are given concrete material. They show limited capacity to manipulate and draw conclusions about objects or events they are not directly presented before them. At a higher level of intellectual development, students free themselves from their dependence on concrete materials and can think, perceive and see relationships when presented with abstract materials. Dear students, let us conclude it here by putting an emphasis on the fact that insight learning is the abrupt realization of the solution of a problem. Neither is it the result of trial and error, responding to an environmental stimuli, nor the result of observing someone else attempting the problem. It is a completely cognitive experience that requires the ability to visualize the problem and the solution internally. This experience is a certain perception of relationships between the elements of a situation and goal. Dear students, this was all about today's lecture. Thank you.